and welcome to a live story time with our friend Eddie the Elephant. The story that Eddie has chosen today is a little bit sad, but it's a very, very important story. It's about a little boy that's granddad passes away. And you know what? The same thing happened to me. And it did make me think a lot about my granddad, the story, but maybe for you, somebody else that you love or somebody else that's very special may have passed away. And it's a beautiful book. So we're so happy you've come to join us. Because it's a little bit longer, we're not gonna sing a song, we're just gonna start straight away with our story. So today's story is called Bird of a Feather. Beautiful front cover picture. So our title is Birds of a Feather. And our author is Tom Christ. And our illustrator is Ellen Rakitansky. Here's our book spine. And our back cover has a little blurb with some beautiful flowers. So let's start reading. Birds of a Feather. Chapter one. When I was little, my grandfather was my very best friend. His real name was Leroy, but I called him Pop. He had a big soft belly and lived in a small Texas town. It had one grocery store and one cafe. People grew a lot of cotton there. My mom and I lived in a big city. It had a subway, tons of places to eat, and lots and lots of people. Mama grew a patch of flowers in our tiny front yard. Pop had a whole shop full of flowers. We visited him a lot. Sometimes we stayed all summer. Those days were hot. Pop's shop had a cooler big enough to walk around in. He kept so many flowers in there, the air was foggy with colour and sweet smells. In the back was a wooden case of icy cold soda in glass bottles. Every day at three o'clock, he took one out and we drank it together. What a beautiful shop. My job was to help load his delivery truck. Oh, there it is. Then we rode around all morning, giving people flowers and pop drove. I picked the radio stations. After work, we'd go to the cafe for lunch. As soon as we reached our table, the lady would bring us warm rolls and butter in a red basket. We'd race eating them all and she would laugh. Y'all sure are birds of a feather, she'd say in her slow drawl. In Texas, that meant Pop and I were a lot alike. Then she'd bring another basket, this time piled really high. Afterwards, full of rolls and soda, Pop and I took naps together under a ceiling fan. It felt good to lie on Pop's big belly. I remember days and days like that. Evenings we played dominoes and croquet and caught fireflies in the backyard. Of all the people I know, Pop was the only one who was always glad to see me, who liked me for the boy I was. I really loved him. Then one day, when we were back at our city home, Mama told me he was gone. My granddad had died. Mama took me with her to Texas so we could tell him goodbye, she said. But when we arrived, there wasn't anybody to say goodbye to. The flower shop was closed. The cooler was empty and hot. It looked grey inside. The delivery truck was gone. I asked to see the lady who brought the rolls, but Mama said no. Instead, she took me to Pop's church. When we got there, it was full of people. Up front was a long wooden box on a stand. There were flowers all around it. They looked and smelled just like the ones Pop and I used to deliver. Now it's time to say goodbye, Mama told me.
But when I looked inside the box, it wasn't Pop in there. I knew it wasn't him because he didn't smile at me once, even though I looked and looked and waited and waited. I didn't want to lie on his big stomach. At home, we used to have an old television and I watched lots of shows on it. That was fun until one day it stopped working. Then it wasn't a television anymore. It was just a broken thing full of stuff that didn't work. Inside the long box with all the flowers around it was kind of like that. An old woman smiled, put her hand on my shoulder and told me she had known Pop ever since she was my size. She said, you should be happy because he's in heaven now. I wasn't. Mama cried and cried. The people all sang. Chapter 2 Back at home, the days passed into weeks. I went to school like always. I played with the other kids like always. Sometimes, Mama and I rode the subway train downtown to eat donuts and see movies. It was all fun, but not as fun as it used to be. I kept thinking about Pop and the long wooden box. But I didn't tell anyone I did that, not my teacher or my friends and especially not Mama. She was still sad too. I didn't want Mama to know I wasn't glad Pop was in heaven or that I hadn't ever said goodbye. I didn't want to hurt her with my feelings. Some days I wasn't sad at all. I was angry. Pop had gone away without me and he hadn't even said why or goodbye. Once I was so mad, I stomped all over my mother's pretty fall flowers until they were flat and dirty. Later, when she asked me what happened to them, I said I didn't know. Then I felt even worse. Chapter 3 One day, after fall was gone and winter was nearly over, Mama and I headed downtown to the subway train. The train made lots of stops to let people on and off, and at the fourth stop, the door slid open and two little birds flew right in. They swooped back and forth from one end of the train car to the other, cheeping and flapping. Everyone ducked and laughed as they whizzed by. The doors closed and the trains took off, little birds and all. They found a perch on the upper handrail. It was slippery, but they hung on. They kept touching beaks and wings and snuggling together. They were mates and they weren't frightened and they were frightened a little bit. All of a sudden, they were moving fast, but they weren't flying. There were lots of light, but no sun at all. They didn't understand anything about trains or being underground. They only knew about trees and sky. At the next station, the train jerked to a stop and one of the birds slipped off the perch. He squawked in surprise and flapped his wings a lot. The train doors opened and he flapped and flopped right out onto the platform. He got to his feet, shook himself and called out to his mate. She answered and flew back and forth in the train car. But she didn't understand what was happening. The doors closed and off she went. She was still inside and she left him behind. She landed on the empty seat across from me and we looked at each other. I could see her heart beating in her chest. She was as alone as I felt. I was scared just like her. Chapter 4 As the train rolled along, a map opened. Oh, sorry, not a map. A man opened his lunch bag and tore some of his sandwich into tiny little pieces. He tossed one bit onto the seat next to the little bird and she gobbled it up. The train slowed as it entered the next station. The man threw another piece onto the floor in front of the doors. The bird flew down and ate that one too. The train stopped, the doors opened and the man threw more pieces outside onto the platform. The little bird went after him, hopping right through the doors. She swallowed one and looked all around, up and down and left and right. 
things were different. Cheep, she said. As the doors closed, she looked right next to me. Cheep, cheep. The last thing I saw of her, she took off flying, heading somewhere I couldn't imagine. I wondered whether she would find her mate again. Would she ever get back outside, back to the trees, to the wind and the sun? Maybe she'd say to herself, my mate is in heaven. Maybe she'd say goodbye to him. But I didn't think so. She was a bird, not a person. Then again, I was a person and I didn't want to say those things either about my pop. So we were kind of the same. That little bird can fly, I thought. It must be really exciting. I imagined her zipping through the subway, eating yummy, yummy food. She was going to search for the sky and might even find more trains. Even if she missed her mate, life was still a big adventure. I looked at Mama and smiled. Cheep, cheep, I said and tucked my hands under my arms, flapping my elbows like wings. I'm a bird. I laughed so hard and couldn't stop. I fell over and Mama said I was too ooh, 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 silly. But she was laughing too. Chapter 5 that afternoon, Mama and I went to a restaurant on top of the tallest building in the whole city. <gasps> Look at that. We ate cheesecake, sitting way up in the sky at eye level with the clouds, while men played violins. Birds flew right by us. <gasps> After in the park, we saw a little girl walking six dogs as big as ponies and on long leashes. It looked like they were walking her. Nearby, a man on a street corner blew real fire right out of his mouth. People clapped and gave him coins. On the way back to the subway station, we stopped at a store full of gardening things. Mama said we needed new flowers to plant in front of our yard porch. I chose lots of colored ones and I paid for them all myself. I had been saving my allowance money. I'd like to plant them, I said, when the weather is a little warmer. Mama nodded and gave me a big, long hug. I think maybe she knew what I had done to our other front yard flowers. They'll be very pretty, she said. Pop would have really liked them. I pictured that, the three of us together, looking at the flowers in bloom on a hot summer day. In my mind, the light around us was soft and rosy, like it had been in the cooler. I was glad I hadn't said goodbye to Pop because now it felt like he was just there with me, even if he wasn't really. I was so happy that day. I ran everywhere, flapping my arm wings, cheeping, looking at everything around me and marveling. The world was just full of amazing stuff. And it's still just as amazing, all these years and years later on. Now, there's even a kid who calls me Pop. Imagine that. Things are so different from how they used to be, but they're also kind of the same. I'm sure glad I never stopped flapping my arm wings. Cheep, cheep. If you know somebody else that would love the story, please send it to them. Thanks for joining us and thanks for listening to such a long story. We will see you next time and remember, if you're feeling sad, just find somebody to give you a nice warm cuddle.